Hi everybody. Today's lecture is going to be on the idea of non-conservative work and how that in particular affects the idea of energy. Now, up to this point we've been kind of ignoring friction and things like that and we've only been talking about really conservative forces. And a conservative force is any force that does not take energy from the system. What that means, for example, is that if you were to start off in a situation with only potential energy, which would be your total energy, and all of that potential energy was converted into kinetic energy, then of course that total potential energy at the beginning and that total kinetic energy at the end would be equal. Now we've seen that already and that seems to go along with conservation of energy. And in particular, when we're talking about especially gravitational potential energy, gravity is one of the most common conservative forces. As gravity causes a shift from potential energy to kinetic or kinetic to potential, it doesn't change any of the values of those energies along the way. However, there are things called non-conservative forces. Now, what these do is they take energy from the system. Now, I know what you're thinking, conservation of energy says you can't really do that. But what I mean is that if you were starting off with 100 joules of potential energy, and at the end, all you had was kinetic energy, you might not have 100 joules. You might only have 75. So where did that other 25 joules go? Well, that means that some sort of non-conservative force acted to convert that other 25 joules into something that wasn't really kinetic energy. So some examples of non-conservative forces are things like friction, air resistance, and collisions. What do all these things tend to create? Well, they tend to create heat in particular. And heat is a form of energy. So when we talked about that 100 joules, then that remaining 25 joules that was missing from the kinetic energy probably became heat energy. So we still stuck with conservation of energy. We still have 100 joules of total energy. But now 25 of it has sort of become something that's not useful. Other examples of where this energy can go, um, light, you know, sparks are created along the way. Uh, sound in particular, especially in collisions, you get sound energy that's created. So let's look at a visual example of this first. So here we have our skater, um, and he's on the ground, so let's bring him up here to about a height of about six meters or so. Okay. Now, you'll notice that we have given him potential energy and his potential energy is equal to his total energy. Okay? So we let him go, and as we've seen before, the potential energy decreases and the kinetic energy increases as he moves down the ramp. And his speed jumps up here to about five and a half or so. But again, the total kinetic energy at the end is still equivalent to our total energy. Okay? And that's because we have no friction. Now, if we put the skater back, and let's turn some friction on. Let's give him some friction now. Okay, now, as you can see, he's starting off with his potential energy, which is his total energy. Now, as he begins to go down the ramp, again, that potential energy starts to decrease. He speeds up, kinetic energy is increasing, but notice we're getting a little thermal or heat energy created here. So that by the time he reaches the bottom of the ramp, all that potential energy is gone. Now notice the kinetic energy here does not equal the total energy. And that's because some of that potential energy was converted or lost to the form of heat energy, kind of an unusable energy. And so that leaves less kinetic energy at the end and you'll notice a much lower velocity. So whenever non-conservative forces come into play, they cause a loss of energy. And by a loss of energy, meaning it's converted into a form that's not really usable. Particularly heat, sometimes light, sound, those are the most common types of energies that it's converted into. So again, friction, air resistance, collision, they tend to cause these things. So let's look at a math example of how we deal with that. Okay, in this example, um, we've got a crate at the top of a 5 meter ramp that is at rest. Okay. And we're going to let the crate slide down the ramp. But now we're going to have some sort of 
friction, some sort of kinetic friction involved. Now, we don't really know how much, but let's say once it reaches the bottom of the ramp, it has a velocity of only 6 meters per second. So the question is, how much energy was lost along the way? How much energy was lost? Okay. Well, to begin with, let's look what we always do. Up here at the beginning, point one, let's ask our questions. Do I have height? Yes. Do I have motion? No. Is there a spring involved? No. So my total energy here is gravitational potential energy. Yes to height. Now, down here at point two, do I have height? No, I'm at the bottom of the ramp. Do I have motion? Yes, I'm moving at six meters per second. Is there a spring around? No, so I don't have to worry about it. So my total energy here, point two, is kinetic. But now there was friction involved. So if friction is involved, I can't say that the total energy at 1 equals the total energy at 2 because there must have been some sort of energy lost. So how am I going to figure that out? Well, the easiest way to determine what your loss is is by the change in your total energy. Okay? Triangle delta meaning change. And changes are always final minus initial. So wherever the total energy at the end minus the total energy at the beginning. Okay. Well, the total energy at the end was made up of kinetic energy, so I can substitute that in. The total energy at the beginning was made up of potential energy, so I can substitute that in. Now, let's put in our equations. Kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, potential energy, mgh. Now, be very careful here. You cannot cancel mass here. You cannot cancel mass here because on this side, there's no m. It's just energy lost, what we're looking for. So don't cancel mass. But now I can substitute in some numbers. I have a mass that I've given as 20 kilograms. I have a velocity that I'm told at the end of 6 meters per second. On the potential energy side, I have a mass of 20 kilograms. Gravity is 10 and a height of 5 meters. So that gives me 360 minus 1,000, which gives me negative 640 joules. Okay, now why negative? Because the energy is going out. So energy lost mathematically comes out to be a negative value. That, anytime you have a negative energy, that means energy is leaving the system. So you can either say your change in energy is negative 640 joules, indicating it's lost. Or in the end, we can simply say our lost energy is 640 joules. Now, where did that energy go? Well, most likely heat. Probably there would have been some sound. We hear it scraping down the ramp or something like that. But basically, that's the form. So that's how non-conservative work operates. Um, Non-conservative work and energy loss, they're sort of basically the same idea because we can exchange work for energy. So friction essentially did 640 joules of non-conservative work to create heat, sound, things like that. So that's it. See you next time.